And welcome back to ESA Winter 2023. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fondant. Links to donate can be found below the stream, or if you don't fancy scrolling down that far, just type the exclamation mark donate function in chat, and we'll give you a nice handy link that you can use. You can also support Alzheimer Fondant by cheering and subscribing. ESA will forward all revenue during ESA Winter 23 to Alzheimer Fondant. And we'd like to take this moment to thank our sponsors. We have WD Black, Lurkit, Red Wolf Networks, and of course, Twitch. And now you've heard from the man himself. You're now going to see the run in action. It is HUD 601 running Sonic 3D in 2D in the Beat the Game category. HUD, take it away. Thank you very much, Ruffle Bricks. Welcome, everyone. Yes, my name is HUD601, and I'm going to be running Sonic 3D in 2D for you. Uh, just in case you missed the interview before, let me explain quickly what this is. Um, hopefully, many of you out there remember Sonic 3D Blast, that wonderful not 3D, but 2.5D isometric game for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. Well, this is a fan game made by the wonderful Sotanuk, and the idea behind it is to kind of imagine what would Sonic 3D Blast look like if it was a 2D classic. The one thing I will say about this is it blooming hard. It's really hard. It's one of the most solid fan games we've ever played. It is also very polished. It is a good fan game as right. well. Okay. Um, and they did remove the um, the flicky mechanic in yes. the game. So in 3D Blast, you need to grab five flickies, move to area one, area two, area three. You don't need to do that. It is literally just from left to right with a little bit of right, then go back to the left again. Yes, I know we go left in a Sonic game, but <laughs> it's a hard game. It's a lot of fun. HUD is a champion at it. And Good luck on your run. Oh, God, now I'm in trouble. So <laughs> we'll explain uh, some of the differences with this game compared to some of the other classics as we go along. But let's get this thing underway. I'll give you do me the honors on the button. Three, two, one, go. All right. So starting off in Green Grove 1 here, uh, the game is thick, it's fast, it's hard. One of the hardest enemies in the game is a lovely little purple enemy with a spinning spike ball around it. And it was hard in 3D Blast. It's even harder here because it is going to body. You can see them there. That one's not going to get you. It's going to be the one up here or the enemy. Ooh, he was nice. They were all nice. So we're going to jump down now. Right now, we actually have all the Chaos Emeralds. So if we got 50 rings, we could transform into Supersonic. But unfortunately, as the beginning of most Sonic games, go, we're going to get Samus and we're going to lose the Chaos Emeralds again. So we're here at the first boss already with Green Grove and we're going to be paid a little visit. As Capture comes down, it knocks the Chaos Emeralds out of us and say hello to Silver Sonic. Hello Silver Sonic. So I'm going to be going for a specific bounce strat here so let's see if we can get it. So we're going to hit the boss here, we're going to make sure the boss is not in its ball form then we're going to try and bounce around in the middle area here. It's not exactly in the middle which is why HUD is doing a kind of V shape here to get all the bounces. Yeah. Very nice quick kill there. Grabs the yellow Chaos Emerald from Silver Sonic there, and we're going to run into Green Grove 2. So, good opening. Well done. Thank you. So, one of the things you will have seen me do is slow down just before the signpost. The reason for it is the faster I go through it, the higher it goes, and the longer it takes to actually stop. So, it's really important. We want to get to it fast, but not go through it fast. All right, Green Grove 2. This is a fun stage because they have a lot of different paths that you can take in a video game. Of course, it is a Sonic style game. You've got top route, middle route, bottom route. Usually top route is the fastest route, but what the developer of this game has done is tried to keep the uh, similarities between some of the 3D Blast level layouts in this one as well. How this translates into springs everywhere, I'll never know, but we're going to find out very, very soon. So coming around the area here, run the loop to loops again. We do have our normal abilities here, the spin dash, the jump, the insta shield as well. And there's a whole bunch of springs here. HUD's going from the middle row right in the top right, and then we get the first boss. First Eggman boss coming down here. We're going to do deliberate damage boosts, trying to get three hits on the boss each time it comes around. There's the giant thing. We want to make sure we always grab one of the rings. This is looking not bad. Doesn't get the insta shield there. Gets the last jump, and bam, that is the boss complete. If you mess that up and you lose any of your rings and don't manage to catch them again, that boss becomes an utter nightmare because technically you're only supposed to hit him when he's lowering down. Uh, but that quick kill there is very good. Yeah, you can only just get them with the insta The other thing that we need, need to talk about in this game is iframes. And the fact this game don't have any. <laughs> Basically. Uh, do you want to explain what I'm doing, Rusty Real 1? All right. So, yeah, the iframes in this game, standard Sonic games, you have a good, like, maybe 
three, four seconds of high frame, Sonic starts blinking, you know you can't take any damage. This game, it's literally about a second. It prevents you from getting insta-killed, but you're not going to be able to damage this unless you are really prepared for it. Now that we're in Rusty Ruin 1, though, we're going to spin dash to the right here to break those barriers, but then we're going to use the gimmick, which is the kind of ballerina twirl coming on here. And you use this to break the Ruin pillars that are there. They can only be broken by those Ruin pillars and, and while you're doing the uh, the spins. So that allows us to come through the rest of the area here, taking out Vector the Croc there. Grabbing the button is going to push us all the way up to the very top. And then we're going to head over to the boss. That's a big ring there. Those big rings are like your special stages that you get in Sonic 3. <laughs> if you want to see those, uh, Huds and I learned that category while we were here for about seven hours. And uh, that's a bonus incentive for stream too. So if it's something you might want to see, consider donating for that alongside their other incentives. But first, we have Fang, the absolute pain in the butt. He's got the red Chaos Emerald here with us. He's going to laugh and then start jumming around with his gun, fire the gun at us, drop some bombs. However, he always goes from the left to the right, the right to the left. Hudson knows exactly where to jump at the top of the explosion there. Use the Insta Shield to get a hit from Fang. Keep him manipulated to get all these hits. He decided to draw a little bit there by not going the other way. And there we go. That is the boss done. That is another emerald obtained. But those are the only emeralds that we're going to get in this game. It is indeed. Now, one of the mechanics in this game is the ability to keep shields between zones. And it is incredibly important. I'm going to be picking up the fire shield in this one. It's not the biggest um, pain if we lose this. But I want to try and keep it all the way through Rusty Ruin 2, all the way through Spring Stadium 1, and then have it for Spring Stadium 2. If I do, it opens up Knuckles' area. But it means I have to play the next two levels perfectly. Who, there is no there? backup. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Knuckles there as well. So yeah, we will be grabbing the elemental shields again, similar to Sonic 3. They're the exact same. You have the fire shield, the thunder shield, and the bubble shield. Uh, unfortunately, you're not really going to see the bubble shield much on this one. You might see the lightning shield a little bit later on, and we definitely are going to be using the fire shield here. So it sees it takes elements as well from other Sonic games, like you've got the mural there from uh, Hidden Palace in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. You also have, of course, the uh, Emerald Shrine area. So we're going to go for a big old bounce down here that allows us to bounce up immediately, fire dash across. I forgot you could do that one. Uh, don't want to get hit by the spikes there. We're going to oh, miss the bad. cycle as well, so we're going to have to go back round the other way and right, come back up. Okay, oh, no, we're just going to restart the stage. Yeah. You last practiced Volcano Valley. I did. <laughs> <laughs> the pause screen gives away where you last were. That's very fun. It's fine. So we're yeah. just going to restart the stage, come and do this again. These stages are massive labyrinths. You are seeing but a fraction of them. Uh, but we're going to just run our way through here, come back down and grab the shield. So up through and round, open the button to open the door, run the area onto the teleporter, straight up again, and then up on the springs, do the bounce, and hopefully get a decent set of cycles here. Okay, so spring one, spring two, spring three, down here, jump on the fire shield, get the ballerino, check for the cycle. Jump, jump, Back fire dash over, here. nice, wait for the other one, run down, wait again, Fire dash, roll, up we go, up and over. Grabbing a set of speed shoes, because we love the speed shoes. Speed shoes are really important here, because what Hutz is going to try and do is maintain the power of the speed shoes all the way through this next segment, because we're going to get to another ballerina twirly area, and if you can keep the speed shoes, you can twirl right over some platforms, not fall down the hole, otherwise you have to take the back up spring. This is looking good, straight across there, right over with the speed shoes, and that is a very nice cycle. Into the boss, we're going to do some boogie in down now. But you've got to be very careful not to lose the shield here. Yeah, Who's that? Very tight window on this boss. I think I've got about five frames to get this jump. Mm -hmm. Here comes the boogie boss. Nice. It's not over yet. Boogie ball down and bounce on his head here. Again, these bosses are based entirely on the 3D blast bosses. And the way that Sotanak has basically convert these bosses into 2D is really respectable. Like, it's brilliant. Oh. Okay, so we've kept the fire shield through one level. Now I've got to keep it all the way through Spring Stadium 1, which also has a very difficult boss, especially to manipulate. The level itself is reasonable, although there is a potential for me getting crushed. Mm -hmm. Those barrels of doom! This, this game is designed to just bring pain to speedrunners. Everything is out to get you. All right, so Spring Stadium, a.k.a. the inside of a clown's pocket, but it actually looks not too bad in red and white here. Uh, but we're going to be fire dashing our way through the stage here. There are certain areas where we're going to be jumping over. We're going to grab an invincibility at a certain point as well. We're going to spin dash, jump. There's your invincibility. Oh. We're going to keep a hold of that. Actually, I'm going the wrong way, but this is all right. As long as we keep it, we get the jump up there. No, we need to go for a second time. Wait for it. Yeah. Go jump up there. Nice. Right over. Holding the right button press here. Landing on the item box there, because that is really, really important. 
Going over the spikes with the invincibility here. Are going to jump over, make sure you don't get crushed by the boxes on this area here. Okay. Where are they going? Play this very safe. Yep, there we go. That's right. And then dodge the big ring, because dodge the big ring right across here. Oh, hello, enemy. <laughs> Where's the spike? Come on. Parfer. Normally, I'd have the invincibility for this, but because I accidentally went the wrong way, that's caused a slight issue, so nice. we're fine on that. Okay, we should be safe at least to the boss now. Yeah, we don't like this boss. So this boss coming up now, it is Tails Doll from Sonicar, and he is a massive pain in the butt. However, HUDs can specifically manipulate him, but without having the Insta Shield, it is quite hard to get the hits that you're looking for. So the first three hits here, Tails Doll is just going to get up and teleport away, going to go to either side, you're going to hit him, and then he'll disappear again. However, after phase three, or the third hit, he's going to go into phase two, where he's going to look a little bit more evil, and he's going to do a myriad of attacks here. Um, one of them is going to be a counter attack, which is this, and he's going to keep doing this, but Huds is going to try and manipulate it to keep Tails Doll going into the same place all the time, getting the hits, making sure dodging the attacks as they come out. Hey. That is a very nice manipulation there. Woo. That fight can be a real pain in the butt, especially when Tails Doll does completely random things. Okay, so having the Fire Shield in Spring Stadium 2 means I can take Knuckles' this route. Mm -hmm. If I get it, it's a one minute time save. I get one shot at this, and it is. So hard to do. So. Fingers crossed, my friend. Okay, if I can have a little bit of quiet just for 20 seconds. Okay, that's fine. So, I just need to wait for the barrel to come down now. That's the majority of the difficult bit done. I, I, uh, if I mess any of that up, it's a soft lock. Whew, nice. Okay. All right. So, that what I was saying there, just as I was uh, miming on that one, is now we're in Knuckles' is right. We're heading towards the area. Losing the shield is something that you don't want to do. But now we're back onto the main path there. It doesn't look like anything major had actually changed, but Sonic's route is significantly longer because he has to do a lot of left and right and left and right slaloming through the stage. We're not going to do a big old spin dash. Uh, we're waiting for the cycle there to come through, using the timer to know which cycle Huds is on. Going to go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then jump up there. Ooh. Not quite high enough, land back on it. That's Ooh. fine, don't Power dash is off. Okay, back right. We'll just go back and do it again. These barrels do not behave the way that they are supposed to. No. Try them. Oh. But we are messing around with the physics on this. Up, down, up, down, up, down, and there we go. That's a bigger jump. There we go. Straight over on the spin dash now. We're going to just head towards the end of the stage here. We're going to jump down, grab the invincibility, and then we're going to go and fight um, average, average arms. arms. <laughs> so you've got big arms from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This is average arms. He's like just tiny little arms instead, and he's... Away he goes. The main thing here is you want the boss to fall down like this, and then you can bounce off him all the way across there. You can see HUD's getting three and four hits each time. When he does that, that's annoying because that's a time loss, but that is a decent fight there. Beautiful. Our friend Ruffle Bricks, do you have anything for us, my friend? I do indeed. I have a hundred dollar donation. That comes from Lakis, and that says, for the superior version of Sonic 3D, run mm. commentated <laughs> and hosted by three awesome people. Hashtag GNU, the only kit. Oh, hey. thank you, Lakis. And that donation goes towards the Pokemon Red Blue uh, Name the Trainer incentive. Nice. Thank you very much. So, we are in our mandatory um, snow ice snowboarding zone. Yeah. I mean, Diamond Dust is great. We love Diamond Dust. After coming here to Spring Stadium, Diamond Dust is a wonderful little breath of fresh air here. Uh, we still have the Fire Shield, which is cool. I uh, can use that for a little bit. Run our way through. Um, however, if you do get hit by any of the uh, ice mechanics in the stage, it does have the ability to just remove your shield entirely, which is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we won't be seeing that. But again, we're going to go and navigate our way through the stage. We know exactly where it is we're aiming for. The springs, the checkpoints, and then big old boost up the ramp there. Again, if you know which part of 3D Blast you've seen, you know where that's coming from. And now we're on one of the big ice slides again. So coming down here, we're going to go right down, keeping the speed as much as we can, about turning on ourselves, oh. trying to get a big jump on the spring there. Doesn't get us. We just take the spring ahead back up, running our way through. And uh, it's looking good. You're doing quite well right now in this one. Thanks. So, our jump here, just because it's annoying, I hit that spring to get up onto the one on the right, one on the left. Holding left so you hit the one in the middle and you don't overshoot. And then we go all the way down. Now, are you going to grab the goldie? Of course I am. Yeah, well, now you're definitely grabbing it. Goes back Golden Shield here is Sonic's first foray into the homing attack. We now have the level little reticle here. This is going to make the boss up here very easy. Um, and we're going to hope to keep a hold of it, basically, at least for the boss fight anyway. So, coming up, Egg Robo is going to be here. 
And it's got a lovely little jet booster from Sonic Adventure DX as Gamma's jet booster. We want to jump lock onto it and we want to keep it in a cycle here. We want to make sure it drops the bomb so we don't lose it. You can see now that we can just keep this going. It's very surprised when we hit it. And one more. Looks hey. good. Nice. Nicely done. That's why we want the homing shield for that boss. So again, to the sign post. Right, Diamond Dust 2. I'm going to be picking up a lightning shield here. It is vital that I keep this one. If I keep it through to Volcano Valley one, I save a minute and a half. It's so vital. In fact, if I do lose it, I will restart the level. It's quicker to do the whole level again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's another one of those. We need the double jump property from the Lightning Shield here. And it's going to enable us to take another Knuckles route that just makes Volcano Valley one significantly faster here. So it's a case of Sonic's having this cake and eating it as well. Uh, but we know the Lightning Shield, we know where it is. We're coming down all these slides at the moment. We just need to make sure we head down towards the bottom. Doesn't matter if we take it and lose the uh, Gold Shield at the moment, but once we have the Lightning Shield, which is right here, Huts has to play it extremely safe. Not only can enemies get rid of it, so can Spikes, so can the gimmick in this stage that is being frozen. So double jumps running our way through. It makes this stage itself faster, but we also have to be wary of where the things are. So nice spin dashes round coming onto the inside in the cave network right now. We're going to fall down a certain right here because we know where our exit is. Spin dash across, down, up on the bounce, down this side, and then back over to the right. Jumping through, and that is us done. We're about to head to the boss fight. Eggman on this one has the, ooh, unlucky, we had roll jump lock there. Those of you not aware what roll jump lock is, basically when you do the jump with the rolling, you are committed to the jump and you do not get to change your direction. Needs to be careful here, spin dashes out the way as he falls down. Another couple of hits, make sure you don't get caught by the snowman. Two more on that one, one more, and the boss ooh, is done. Okay. Kept the shield, good job. So you can see just how precise you have to be in this game. There are enemies literally everywhere. There's spikes everywhere. So it has genuinely made this a real challenge of a Sonic game. Um, it's taken me over a year to really be able to learn it to this level. And it's, yeah, one simple mistake. Like I say, if I lost the lightning shield, there's a minute gone. Um, in terms of a PB attempt, it's over. Yep. You cannot afford to make mistakes in this. So, Volcano Valley 1, we're going to take Knuckles route. We are indeed. Again, this is where the double jump property of the Lightning Shield is going to come in handy because there's a lot of jumps that Sonic himself just cannot make. But with the double jump, it is now possible, especially because of where the layers of some of these spikes are. Volcano Valley, as his name suggests, though, does have lots of volcanoes. So there's a big ring. Here is the beginning of Knuckles' route in this area. We are going to use the invincibility as much as we can. Another thing that is different between these games and the classic counterparts, of course, is the nice little quality of life improvement. You can still use your lightnings, or you can use your elemental shield's powers while you are uh, invincible, or even while you're supersonic as well. So we're going to be very careful as we come out here. We are still not done, almost landing on those spikes there, as we need to get the double jump up here, round and double jump up here, and we are coming through. One more jump down here, double jump over, and up and in. And yep. that is it. Well cool. done, buddy. Okay, that's a minute time save. And that takes you right to the boss fight. GG's, mate. That is that is. This game fantastic. is so nerve-wracking. Okay, now this is an auto-scroller section, but it's one of these wonderful ones where if you outrun it, it catches up with you. So the Lightning Shield gives us another half-minute time save here if I do everything perfectly. So. A so number of precise jumps needed to come up here. Again, the lava is rubber banding below us there. Get hit by it, it's going to push you up, but unfortunately, you're going to lose the shield. So we're going to keep a hold of it as much as we can. We can only get to this point, but you can see the lava is right there with us. There's no way it should have caught us by that point. We can still get up here towards the last segment. We're going to do a fancy, big, long peel-out jump over here. That allows us to get round and up and just race the lava to the top. As we say, saving Woo. 30 seconds. There's the 30 seconds. Second. And now it's Mega Knuckles time. Hey. So Mega Knuckles is coming up. He's going to dive into the lava, going to jump back out. Huds is going to lose the shield deliberately. Do two attacks with the uh, Insta Shield there. Get a third one coming through. Hopefully going to see this three times. Taking the damage boost just because it makes it easier to get those hits. And the rings are going to bounce back anyway. So it doesn't matter because the stage ends right after this. There and there you go. Nice. So yeah, the damage boost is really nice on that one because it lines you up perfectly for the hits with, with uh, Mecha Knuckles. That's why we do them. So the next level, we're going to see the only uh, the only glitch in the game that we still do. Um, this uses the Sonic Worlds engine. It has some quirks in terms of how it deals with physics. One of the weird quirks is if you get inside a wall, it just sends you straight up. So this, this is a vertical level. It's a very vertical level. So we're going to take full advantage of the fact that if you're in a wall, the game's like, uh, what? And sends you straight up. Huds is going to do a nice easy one right here. Hold left, do a single spin dash to the right, and then just run into the wall. Woohoo! Wrong way. 
Uh, and the way that this is working is we are basically using these breakable walls that we have. Uh, the collision on them at the top. It's not. Imagine it as a rectangle, but it's a rounded rectangle. So we're hitting exactly on the rounded part of it that gets you clipped in the wall. So Hud's here right now. He's trying to use the fire dash, hey, making sure it gets right on the pixel there where the seam is. Gets caught on the corner, sent straight up and through, and now we are in the boss. This boss uses fire. We're invincible with a fire shield. We're literally going to stand and hit the four of these twice. So eight hits takes a while. Ruffled. If there's anything I'd say, take it away, my friend. Go. 40 uh, seconds. No worries. Uh, $15 donation here from JC. No comment, but thank you very much. $5 donation from our very own Tiny Tim. Hey. He says, hey all, Huds, you are an amazing person and speedrunner. It has been a pleasure to spend time with you this week at ESA. Cheers. P.S. Arg. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. That one goes to the darkest dungeon. Name the hero's incentive and $5 from Nico Hart 137 who says, Hi Huds, thank you for being a great friend and inspiration to me. I'm so glad that I bob ruled to remind you of bob rule. By the way, did I mention bob rule? If bye. not, bob rule. Okay, bye. Cheers, Nico. <laughs> that one, go uh, that one uh, goes to the portal to ESA mummification. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing I always say to Nico when he says something nice to me. No, you. He always, he always says nice to me. He says nice to me. Like, Nick, Nico's amazing. I don't know Nico. why. Yeah. yeah. What are you two planning? <laughs> <laughs> Always planning something. Thank you all very much for your kind donations, by the way. All going to a wonderful cause, Alzheimer's London. All right, here we go. We are now going into the two hardest levels in the video game. It is Gene Gadget and Panic Puppet. Gene Gadget 1 is the calm before the storm. Don't ask me how a fire shield works in rain. I don't know either. So we're going to go around here. We know exactly the routes that we're going to take, but Huds is going to have fun with the boss on this one. You say fun, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, what we've got in this one is, is of course, the pipe mazes here. So this is an honorary 8-bit game at this moment in time, as we do love the tubes. Tubes. We do love it. Tiny Tim loves the uh, the tubes in that as well as we go through. But we are deliberately taking a specific route through the game here that's going to allow us to navigate through the pipe maze in the quickest possible way. Sometimes means double backing on ourselves, or at least it looks like it is but we are progressing through the level. Again, another giant maze on this one. Don't need to keep the fire shield, but it's always nice to have in this case. Uh, but we're gonna use the springs, going up the fans there, and then try and not get caught by this lovely little mouse. And he opens his mouth. <laughs> Commentator's curse. <laughs> it's really not a problem. Like any bit like I wanted the fire shield for, I've already done. If we got to the boss with it still, the first thing I'd actually do is lose it. Uh, yeah, because the insta shield is just far too powerful for the bosses here. We need it. It's really good. Make sure you hold left there when you go in that one so you take the left tube. We're going to go through and come out the other end. Instead of running into that one, we jump up and over it. And this is going to take us right towards the boss now. It is literally just hold right to win. So down we go. In we go. And then we do the funky little maze one. This is a shout out to the Aba games. You hold left. You come up through the pipe there, you go into the next one, and it's going to be a case of you hold down, you press right, you hold left. So it's down, then right, then down, then left, and boss. Lovely. That's kind of a little reference to one of the 8-bit games there. Now we have five bosses, but we only have to fight three of them, so they're RNG. Starting with Mecha is good. Mecha Sonic here is really, really nice. Very similar to his Sonic 3 version here. He's going to just spin around and uh, he's going to just jump around the other side. So if you played Sonic 3 Knuckles, you're probably okay. Then you oh, got the worst no. one. This so this one. one is a pain in the butt because he is only going to become vulnerable when he is um, basically away from you. So he's in his ball form there. He will not drop out of ball form unless you are away from him, but he likes to chase you. So there, he is not going to come out because you were too close to him when he activated his attack. Now he's being an absolute pain in the butt. So get a hit there, wait to see what he does. He's going to dash in, we're going to go to the left, we're going to wait for him to come out on the right, get one hit, he should get another hit there, jump through. Then we get Sonic 2, so that is not Ooh. bad at all. So the Sonic 2 fight here is going to be the same as Sonic 2's one. Uh, difference is we have rings, so it's slightly easier. If he does his dash, however, he can grab you and will just throw you across the arena, which is like this. Like that, there we go. <laughs> nice landing, not taking damage there. So last couple of on that one. And away we go. There are, of course, two more Sonics in there. You have Metal Sonic, and you also have, of course, Silver Sonic again. Silver Sonic, the same as the one that you fought in Green Grove 1. Metal Sonic is, of course, Metal Sonic from Sonic CD. You can fight all five at once. It's not fun. <laughs> no, it's not. You have to uh, have all the emeralds to enable a secret button before that room and lets you fight all five of them. 
Um, of course, we don't want to do that in a speed run. We don't want to do that at all, really. No. But now into Giga 2, we do have the Slope of Rage. But at this time, it's been squished. It's been too deified. But what we're going to do is we're going to go grab a Lightning Shield and use its special property of being immune to electricity. Because what the game is expecting you to do is to go down the left and the right sides of this flattened Slope of Rage, press the buttons to disable the electric beams. But if you have the Lightning Shield, you can just run right through them. So use the double jump to get up here and just goodbye half the level we don't need to do yet. We're going to keep a hold of the shield, of course, because we want to use it not only for the other barrier that we have coming up, but for the boss as well. So we're going to make sure we jump over here. We're going to come down this section. We're going to make sure we don't get hit by the Orbinaut. Making sure we're falling down. Trying to not get hit by anything on the floor as we come around. Double jump up, way through here to get onto the moving platform. Very nice. Straight down and round into this area here. Do another peel out double jump. The reason we do the peel out double jump is because when you peel out, you do not have roll control lock because you don't roll. This allows you to move, come through the magnets, come up towards the area where the boss fight is going to be. Please don't get cursed by the door. <laughs> I hope not to. Shout out to Ben in Sweden, by the way, who taught me this route, and it's so much easier than the other route, believe it or not. Because we are already at the boss. Do not get crushed by that door, as you say. That's nasty. And now I have to be very careful with this boss because the physics are just weird. Do you want to quickly talk about how the physics work in this game and why they're so annoying? So, in this game, obviously we've got like oh, moving conveyor belt. Well, that, that, that happens. I don't need it. Um, the physics in this game, as we say, we have roll control lock is one of the things they have to worry about. If you jump and you roll with it, you are committed until you hit the ground there. You've also got things like moving conveyor belts in that here. You can see HUDs is trying to move at a certain speed, certain angle on that one. And it can just change your momentum of your jumps that you have. Sometimes you'll get a really longer jump when you come off it. Like if you're running against the conveyor belt, you're fighting the speed, you jump, you're going to jump further than you think you're going to jump because you have that speed stored. And it's just knowing and understanding which part of momentum you've got and how it's going to work. Especially important for Panic Puppet coming up here. The other thing to say is that this game can just randomly send you the wrong direction with the momentum. Normally if you hit something, it bounces you back. Sometimes it just takes you the other way. Why? Don't know. Thankfully, it didn't happen for you there, because on the right hand or left hand side of that boss, there is just a kill plane. There's just a hole. So I'm going to get the backup lightning shield here because I lost it from the previous level. So I'm going to stop here, grab this one, and now I need to try and keep this all the way to the end. This is the only stage here where you can actually see some of the flickies in little test containers. Of course, a reference to the original 3D Blast, because this is the last level where you would be saving them. We are going to be using the double jump to our massive advantage on this one, because you see all these cranes and that in the background. We're going to be using them uh, to just get up to a higher elevation and take these launch base style elevators right to where the boss is. Okay, so... Going to use this lightning shield to our advantage to take a really sneaky little route here if I can get this jump. Nice. nice. Okay, so one, two, two three, four. We're going to come up to this one. We're going to spin dash off here, off that, to the right, and into the left. Nice. That skips a whole little platforming section, saves about 20 seconds. Yep. Now I need to be careful not to lose lightning shield in these spikes. I'm going to wait for this cycle to come back down. Spin dash through it. Hold down because we've got three enemies along here. There's one, there's two, and after the third one, I can do a little jump into the left. Now I need to make sure I don't trade this in for a bubble shield. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. See, I don't like that. I don't like those elevators. They're slow when they do that. So sometimes you get the back side of the elevator first, and it's like, you just have to wait. Nothing you can do about it. But we're going to come through. We're going to keep the rolling just to make sure we roll into the enemy's double jump there. Dodge the mines. Make sure we don't lose it. Coming around the other area, we are almost at the boss fight. And ooh, boy. Uh, okay. So this boss fight is in two parts. Uh, the very first time I played this game, um, I got stuck here for somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. Yep. It is genuinely one of the most difficult boss fights I've ever seen. The first part's not too bad. Famous last words. Mm -hmm. The second part, well, you'll see when we get there. Yeah. While so, I'm, I was going to say, while I'm doing this one quickly, Ruffle Breaks, do you want to quickly jump in? Certainly. We, uh, first of all, a little bit of uh, uh, a note for Argic. The uh, tubes that you mentioned earlier, that's from Sonic 2 8-bits. That's just, what's that's a reference to? Uh, we have a $50 donation from Robertson Duncan Atreus, Ooh. who says, So glad I can catch this Sonic 3D and 2D run. You're doing awesome, Huts. Thanks for all for the most awesome week. Let's push to beat the 1 million total. And that goes to the Cuphead Chalice Cosplay uh, incentive. Thank you very much. I'll get over to you. 
Thank you. All right, so this little boss here, if you've played um, some of the Mega Drive or Genesis games, they're probably a familiar boss fight to you on that one, kind of like Rocket Knight Adventures. However, phase two here is fun. Eggman has his double drills and is going to move to the left and to the right, or to the top and to the bottom. The way he moves and the attacks he is going to use are selected based entirely on where he is. Now that he's moved up to the top, he's either going to fire a drill at us or he's going to use laser. He is now going to fire the drills at us. He's going to start running up to the top again. He can either fire the lasers or then charge you down. We want to see the laser beam. No one said he is drilling down on us. Now he's going to drill back up and chase us because this is what he does. He is an absolute pain in the butt because his hitbox can be entirely protected by the drills here. Fire them off. This is going to give us a hit on that one. Hutz is trying his best to keep a hold of this lightning shield, but the boss is not playing ball. He is now coming out. He's doing another set of drills here, so we have to double jump. The poor Tails gets hit by the drills, which means we have to reset and go again. There it is. Here's the laser. We're going to go to the edge. We're going to jump, and that is it. That boss fight is done. Hey. So the Got time for a little message? Yeah, jump in. There is free pizza near the elevators for everyone. Go grab a slice and come back, thanks to Red Wolf Networks. Woo! All right, bam, get the pizza, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can all get pizza in three minutes, all right? That's all that's left on the right, yeah. Uh, but no, genuinely, that boss, the quickest RNG you can get on that one is you want that boss to spawn in, you fire off his drills at you straight away, and then just go up to the top and do laser immediately. Because the laser is long enough that it will allow you just to effectively one cycle him. However, the moment you lose that lightning shield, the boss fight becomes a massive pain and he is guaranteed to laser you because it happens so many times to you. Yeah. Uh, but now we are in Panic Puppet 2, the final zone of the game. We're going to keep it on the lightning shield right now. We're going to spin on the nuts because the nuts are little platforms that we get to go up there. We're going to make sure we switch it out to a fire shield up this little segment here. And the reason for that is because we want the horizontal dash to do a very big jump over an entire water section that is going to skip a good chunk of the level. Again, another stage that's a maze here, but because we have the maps and we speed run it, we know where we can go and we figured out a way to get over here. So, going to fall down, make sure we roll. We're going to go into another elevator. They are here going to keep a hold of this fire shield. It is imperative that we make this next jump coming up. Okay, we go. We're coming through on the conveyor belts. We're going to run around the loop just to make sure we have it. We're lining ourselves up. We're going to get the jump up, fire jump through and over. And there we go. But we're not done yet. We're going to see if we can make the cycle on the platform here. We're going to jump up on this one. We're going to get a jump over. We're going to jump and then land on it. Get the jump one, jump two. And that's the full cycle as well. Very nice part of the level there. Saving a lot of time and then failing to land on the nut. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to keep a hold of that and then we're going to take it into the boss fight because again, the boss fight's got three phases. The second phase is all fire. If you have a fire shield, it is negated entirely. Yeah, makes it really nice and easy. Right, well, I'm getting to the boss. Ruffle Bricks, any last things you want to jump in with before the end of the run? Yeah, $5 donation from Cass who asks, why is the best Sonic character and why is it Red Sonic? <laughs> I would like to weigh in on that one and say, it's not, it's Tails Doll. Ooh. Bam. That will, that will go to the Pokemon Red Blue Name the Trainer incentive. <laughs> okay, here we are at the final boss. The three stages you are used to in 3D Blast. I'll get explain them, please. So, the first phase here, we want the boss to slam down and then become vulnerable. What Hudson is doing is manipulating the boss to keep the arms as far apart as he possibly can because they do like to crisscross and get rid of your shield. We need four hits on each side. This is the last two on this one. Phase one is done. Phase two, he's going to fire his Flamin' Verfer at us with where he can verf Flamin', but he's going to start on the left, uh, the right-hand side here. We're going to aim for, again, two hits on this one. If you're lucky, you can get a third bounce there, as we did. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though, because we can still only two cycle it. But as you can see, they have the fire as it comes around. It doesn't worry about anything. We're going to get our last two hits in here, and we'll jump down into phase three. Phase three, we're going to stand on the left-hand side, and he's going to fire some rainbow balls at us. The interesting thing about the rainbow balls is that sometimes they'll get rid of your shield, and sometimes they'll bounce off it. You don't know what's going to happen until it hits you. It's been fixed in the latest version. Woo! <laughs> so now they deflect, right? Now they deflect. Lovely. So we're going to jump up here, get the last two hits on this boss, and then time is going to be coming up once the uh, screen fades to white, basically, or fades to black. So getting our last couple of hits here, you can see him just he's doing his lovely figure eights on the balls there. We just need to keep them going through. But that makes it really easy. I might actually run the game again now that I don't <laughs> get trolled on the final boss. Okay, so last two hits coming up. Time will be very shortly on the fade out. And that is the boss done, that is that. And of course, the background there is a shout out to Knuckles Chaotix as well. Time. And there's time. GG. Thank you. You have no idea how relieved I am. <laughs> that run 
always makes me anxious. It, I cannot stress enough just how much time you can lose in this run through a single mistake. As I say, if I lost the Lightning Shield in Diamond Dust 2, it's, it's quicker to restart because I'll instantly lose a minute and a half. Lose the Fire Shield by Spring Stadium uh, Spring Stadium 2, you've lost a minute instantly. Um, it's why the estimate is so conservative because genuinely in practice, I've had a PB of like 28 minutes, but I've had some runs at 36 to 38 minutes. That's why it needs to be that conservative. But um, yeah, that is Sonic 3D in 2D. That is one of the hardest Sonic games I've ever played and ever learned. Um, as our geek mentioned earlier, there is currently an incentive open on stream too. If you want to watch us do this as a race, but an even harder category, because we're going to do all emeralds, you've seen nothing yet. The special stages are the worst things ever designed. Sorry, Sota, but they kind of are. So, so do you like <laughs> Sonic 2 special stages? Do you like the half pipe? It's amazing. Do you not want to see the rings before the whiz, whiz past you and you're like, where'd they go? I There's needed those. no draw distance on it. They are, they, they, they are basically, imagine the Sonic Special 2 stages on Iron Brew. That's what they are, okay? That's a good way of putting it. That's a big way of putting it. But yeah, that is a donation sent over on Stream 2. It needs about $500 more to be met on that one. Huds and I will, of course, raise it. We learned the category here live at ESA two days ago to come and do it. So we spent about seven hours learning it, got our first sub hour run on it. And uh, if it does meet, get met, He'll trounce me, but it'll be a good time. It'll be good fun. But um, yeah, just really quickly. Firstly, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to that person there, Sotanuk. Um, an absolutely incredible fan game developer has made amazing mods for Sonic 3 Air, one of the other games I run, made this entire game himself as well. Um, I do give him a bit of a hard time for how difficult this game is, but genuinely, it's a fantastic game. It's free to download and play as well, which is even better. So do support Sotanuk. Do go and download and play this. It is a wonderful, wonderful game. Um, big thank you, Argit, for commentating for me. This is one of the few games where I genuinely cannot do any commentary. I have to concentrate constantly. So I really appreciate you being here because otherwise it would have been 30 minutes of silence. Um, also, thank you Ruffle Bricks for, uh, for hosting and not taking the mick out of me too much, uh, which is always nice. So cheers, mate. No not, worries. Not I did just the required amount of mickey taking. Yeah, exactly. Not that I care what you think. Um, but uh, <laughs> little throw back to worms, don't worry. Um, but yeah, the other thing just to say is um, a big shout out to everyone at Club 601, to everyone that supports me. Really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, you guys are, are wonderful. You give me a lot of your time um, and you support me in terms of, of, you know, certainly with this game, helping me get through all the difficulties of learning this speed run because there have been many times I wanted to just drop this game and quit. Um, but yeah, really happy with it. Also, shout outs to my wife who's somewhere back there in the audience. Where is she? <laughs> I don't know, she's hiding away somewhere, but whatever. Um, Arg, anything for you? Uh, can you give, uh, can you make Club 601 really happy? What? Can you just sit and do your pose? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lead out with it. Finally, if you want to come and watch any more Sonic speedruns, if you want to see more from me, twitch.tv slash HUD601. But in the meantime, back to you, Ruffle Bricks. It was a throwback to Manic Miner, not Worms, you silly boy. That's <gasps> <a good point. laughs>